Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 24th day of April. It is Wednesday, and we are in the middle of another week, and we are winding down the month of April, and we have just a few more days left, and um, next Tuesday will be the 30th, and then on Wednesday we'll be going into the month of May, and already, so, okay, so today's topic is titled, Who's Camp?, and we'll get into that topic here in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to greet you, as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he, too, can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And he wants to be. And he's not willing that any should perish. That's what God says in his holy word, that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. And then call upon his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who came down to this earth, and was born of a virgin over 2,000 years ago, and then lived the holy, sinless life, which none of us could do, and proved that he could keep the entire law, and that we can't. And so he didn't uh, just come down here to do that and to work miracles, but he came down here for a purpose, for a reason, so we could be reconciled with him. He went to the cross, took that cup of wrath from God the Father, and took it upon himself, the whole sin of the world, and... Uh, took it away and cast it behind his uh, back and all that and uh, if you just simply call upon him and admit you're a sinner and you can't get yourself to heaven it's not by any types of works that we can do and can't earn it can't pay for it can't get there by water baptism it's only by Jesus Christ who is God manifest in the flesh and and he is ready and willing to save your soul if you'll just humble yourself and stop rejecting him and call upon him and trust him and he will be glad to do that for you and then that's the, just the start of it and then after that he'll show you guide you direct you in all truth and help you to live a christ-like life each and every day as you desire to do so and bring him into your life and have him uh, rule and reign in your heart so all that <clears throat> so amen so here we go. We're going to get into today's scripture song first from Psalms 23, all six verses here. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. Praise God. I shall not want to. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's right. <clears throat> Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table be for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Well, 
up in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, a little challenging there in certain parts, but we'll try it again at the end of the broadcast, along with yesterday's again. So, let me flip this back over to yesterday's scripture song, and we'll do those <clears throat> at the end of the broadcast. But now, let's go ahead and get into today's topic again, uh, Wednesday, April 24th, 2024, titled, Who's Camp? And we have Romans 14, verse 1, is the passage, and it says, Him... That is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful dispensations. Romans 14, 1. So, and then you can read the entirety of that chapter on your own uh, time. Well, let's go ahead and see how many verses are in this chapter first before we uh, move on. So, Romans 14. <clears throat> All right, so Romans chapter 14. There's 23 verses here. So, um, let's see. So it goes down here. <clears throat> it talks about, um, so you can read that in our new Tom. And so I'm sure there was only no uh, context uh, going along with this uh, first part of the verse. So, good to read that. And I encourage you to do that on your own time. But we're going to go ahead and get into the topic here straight away. And today's author is A.H., and that would be the initials for Al Hughes. And he's a retired pastor from Mesa, Arizona. So let me read you what he wrote on today's topic. Titled again, Who's Camp? In Romans 14.1, he writes here, Herein is some wise advice I received from a saintly preacher. He says, Don't get trapped in some club or camp regarding the ministry of God's word. A word, <clears throat> I am talking about some preachers or Christians will avoid you if you associate with other folk of whom they don't approve. And he writes in parentheses, usually over some petty thing that doesn't make much difference. <laughs> right? So, okay. So they, he's talking about that. He says, I try not to deviate from the word of God. However, I have been harshly criticized for f uh, fellowshipping with someone who didn't meet the one uh, doing the criticizing uh, cr criteria. Uh, he says here, the author says, the individual in question may not meet my requirements, but I saw an opportunity to minister to a brother or in some way be ministered to we all have differences, that's right, so we all can't agree on the same thing, but we can all agree that uh, we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, and we all gather together under Him, <clears throat> So, and we all don't agree on everything and have different uh, differences in things, but we should not let that uh, break our fellowship and argue about those things that are um, really not that important. I mean, yeah, they are important to a point, but not to um, break fellowship over, and uh so let's make sure we don't do that. All right. So again, he says we all have differences, uh, along with our strengths and strengths and weaknesses, as Dr. Harold uh, uh, Seitler uh, taught uh, his preacher boys. God can get a pretty uh, straight uh, lick with a crooked stick <laughs> uh, if an individual is not close to what I am. I don't try to remake him into something else, right? Because everybody grows at their own, um, in their own time and at their own level. And they might not be necessarily where uh, you and I are at. But we got to be patient and let them get caught up. <clears throat> and uh, not to criticize them too much. Help them along. That would be a good thing. But not to shun them if they don't have it right yet or haven't given up something or or don't know something, show it in the Bible, and when the Lord convicts them, convinces them that thing, that they would give it up or change uh, that about themselves. So we need to learn to help them along. All right, so again, if an individual is not close to what I am, I don't try to remake him into something else. We sometimes hurt ourselves by 
not treating the brethren as true brothers or sisters and friends because they are considered members of another club or movement. So, and uh, <clears throat> so as long as they're saved, they're saved, born again believers in Christ, and they might not um, have everything right like we do, and they might have come from a different uh, church or whatever that had different things to it, and they're trying to get out of that uh, that uh, uh, particular lifestyle, like it might be a rock and roll church or something they came out of, or or a um, praise and worship church or something that didn't have any real truth, and they're still uh, kind of hung up on those things and trying to get that out of their life. we got to learn to help them along again, so amen. <clears throat> he writes here again, I'm continuing on. I certainly have learned we all are different amidst our similarities. So are snowflakes, but they look good together. When we get to heaven, there will only be one club, club, uh, which is not really a camp. It is the church of the firstborn, Hebrews 12:23. But that church of the firstborn isn't really talking about believers. It was uh, uh, this church in the Old Testament. So I believe that's uh, what that was uh, talking about there. A different type of church in the Old Testament there, but uh, they weren't saved. Uh, didn't trust Jesus in the Old Testament. It was a um, different time back then, but Jesus hadn't uh, come down to this earth and died for our sins yet. But if you had faith in uh, something God uh, said and you had faith in that, then uh, you were made righteous. So, <clears throat> and all that, but we won't get into that too much right now. So you need to understand that. And then he concludes with this. May the Lord bless your own gifted ministry or labors in his holy word. So we all have different gifts and different ministries we do. As long as we're getting the gospel out there and telling people about Jesus. Whether it be door knocking or uh, distributing EOC booklets. Or going out and doing public ministry like preaching and handing out gospel tracts. Or doing one on one um, witnessing however you're doing it as long as you're getting the truth out and all that other stuff comes afterward as we grow and learn God's word and what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do and how we're supposed to live and not live and, and all that stuff so alright so good little topic there hope you understood that uh, some <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and get into the Daily Strength Volume 2 book and this is by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray, as we're continuing through this week on fasting, and today is a church night, so no devotional um, for this uh, night here, but we do have this passage for day 81, church night, from Psalm 35, 13, and it says, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing uh, was sackcloth, I humbled myself, or excuse me, I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. So that's Psalm 35, 13. And I believe this was a Psalm of David. Let's look at it really quick. Psalm 35. All right, Psalm 35. <clears throat> yep, this is a Psalm of David. And there's 28 verses to this Psalm, so I encourage you to read it on your own time there. But uh, for time constraint, we won't get into all that. So that was for today church night and now let's go ahead and grab the more fight on story book because on wednesdays and sundays we read from the more fight on story uh, book here and this is the cover to that book with the war plane on the front of it and this is more amazing stories about those who have persevered through hardship and danger by sam gip brother gip and we got three stories today that I'll read read to you um first we'll do these quotes by um or from Walter uh, Waite, that's W-A-I-T-E, Waite, a survivor, and these two uh, quotes from him, and then a uh, passage, and then another quote, so it's actually three quotes from him, and then this passage here from Psalm 138.3, so let's get into these quotes and then read the story. All right, so it says here, Dear companions, every hope has vanished for us too. The black damp is stronger than before it is best we retreat to where we were before and wait for death 
And that's Walter uh, Waite, a survivor. And another quote from Walter Waite, Dear brothers, at this point, there is nothing for us to hope for as far as leaving the tomb alive, or this tomb alive. We might as well resign ourselves to die as men. Hold dear those few lines you wrote. Before we die, however, my di idea is to pray to God not to give us such a cruel death. Walter Waite. And then Psalms uh, 138.3 says, in the day when I cried, thou answerest me, and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. And then another quote here from Walter Waite. Companions, I've got another idea. And then that leads into the story here. I've got another idea, dot, dot, dot. And the author's note here from Brother Sam Gipp. He says, the coal mine in Cherry, Illinois was opened in 1905 and heralded as the safest in the country. It was declared fireproof. On November 12, 1909, it caught fire. 259 miners lost their lives. The fire burned so fiercely that it was March of 1910 before it was finally extinguished and all the bodies recovered. Wow. All right, so that's a... Uh, is the author's note and leads into the story here so let's read this and i'll read it to you and if you have a copy of the book you can follow along it's on page two excuse me 257 and here's the story uh, i've got another idea 279 miners were trapped over 300 feet underground when the cherry mine uh, fire cut them off from the uh, hoisting shaft 259 of them died. The other 20 tr uh, tried uh, to. Uh, this group of castaways from various locations in the mine uh, was led by Walter Waite, an assistant mine manager who had chosen to stay behind and try to rescue miners rather than escape when it was still possible. The men retreated deeper into the mine in hopes of escaping the fire, but the mine was filling with black damp and odorless gas that could fell a man in seconds and kill him in a minute. For three days, 21 survivors had wandered around trying to find a way out, always being cut off by flames and smoke. On November 14, one of the men took a few steps and dropped. He was dead, black damp, without food and water, and with the mine corridors silently filling with black damp, the men knew they too would soon be dead. They wrote letters to their families, prayed, sang, abide with me, and listened to a sermon by William uh, uh, Cle Cleland, that's C-L-E-L-L-A-N-D, Cleland, one of the miners. Then, then they sang, Nearer my God to thee, and at 9 p.m., laid down and patiently waited for the gas to put them to sleep. Wow. An hour later, Walter Waite called out, Companions, I've got another idea, and it's this. Do you all believe that if we make two walls, one at the entry of the road, we can hold back the black damp from us for a couple of days? And if you believe it's opportune to do this job, it's better to start work, working at once. The wall held uh, death back for five more days. Then on November 20, they decided to try again for the hoisting shaft. They broke a hole in their man uh, makeshift wall, and seven of the strongest set out and ran into a group of rescuers who were fighting the fire while recovering bodies. They never expected to find anyone alive. Twenty men decided to give up and die, but then lived because one chose to fight on. <laughs> so, quite a story there. And now the next story on page 259 is titled, They Tried to Go Over Him. All right, so it says here, No man who saw it happen lived to tell about it. The range... The violence, the desperation, it all happened as 
August 7, 1942, became August 8 of 1942. The place was the small island of uh, Tulagi, T-U-L-A-G-I, Tulagi, in the Solomon Island chain in the South Pacific. The Marines had landed and established a tenuous uh, beachhead and then prepared for the inevitable Japanese counterattack. That night, they hit the line with four separate assaults. The center of the line was the weakest. A breakthrough there would allow the Japanese to attack Marine headquarters as well as roll up the line. That's where Marine Private First Class John Ahirens, A-H-R-E-N-S, Ahirens, uh, was positioned. That's where they found him the next morning with blood oozing from two bullet wounds to the chest and three bayonet wounds to his body. Around his foxhole lay the bodies of 13 Imperial Japanese soldiers. Beside him lay the body of a dead Japanese sergeant. Draped, uh, draped across his legs was a dead Japanese officer. As Captain Lewis Walt attended the dying Marine uh, uh, Hrens gasped, Captain, they tried to come over me last night, but I don't think they made it. They hadn't. Private Johnny Hearns had paid the ultimate price of valor. Fight on. So, that's his story there. And now uh, the third and final story for today is titled, Two Heroes at Once. And this is on page 260 and 261 of the book. All right, Two Heroes at Once says Americans are a heroic people. They never turn away from overwhelming odds and never fail, uh, even in the midst of disasters, to think about the safety of the other guy. And among this race of courageous people, there are certain groups that excel at acts of both bravery and compassion. Policemen, firemen, and members of the U.S. military are among those groups. When Muslim terrorists attacked the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, members of the two former groups shined like beacons of courage and selflessness. After the South Tower collapsed, firemen knew its sister, the North Tower, was also doomed. Orders were given to abandon efforts to fight the fire on the 86th floor and to evacuate the building. Josephine Harris had started down the stairs with the others from her office on the 73rd uh, floor, but at 59 years old, uh, the going was slow. By the time she reached the 14th floor, she was completely exhausted and unable to move another step. As she gasped for air, a group of six firemen from Ladder 6 and a police officer came rushing down from the 27th floor. They stopped. The building was in imminent danger of collapsing, and the, these men all wanted to get out. However, no one was about to leave this exhausted grandmother behind. David Lim, the policeman, and Bill Butler, a fireman, supported Josephine between them and started down but hesitating to help Josephine had stolen critical time. They would not make it out of the building before it fell, as everything around them gave way. Neither Lim uh, nor Butler, faced uh, with certain death, thought of themselves. Instead, both thought of Josephine, and both threw themselves on top of the helpless lady in an effort to protect her. The stairs beneath them fell away, and the 110-story building collapsed around them. As the dust settled, the leader of the team, Captain J. Jonas, was amazed to find that not only was he alive, but all the men with him uh, were, and so was their unsteady uh, charge, Josephine Harris. Firefighters found Jonas and his crew and pulled them from the wreckage. Later, Jonas would sum up their survival by saying, we all thought Josephine was walking much too slow, but in reality, she was the one with the perfect timing. God gave us the courage to help her, 
And that's how we ourselves were saved. Fight on. Wow. All right. Well, praise the Lord. All right. So that's the end of the stories for today. And let's see how many stories we can do next time. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We'll try to do six next time because they're short ones. There's only one kind of lengthy one. So do six next time because they're all short ones. So 262 and 263 is the pages of the first story. And this first story is titled, He Went Down With His Ship. So that's the first story. And then we have this quote here on page 264 from Star uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Dan Brown, who removed the RPG around from Private Moss. So quote from him. And then the second story is titled, Army Strong. And so that's a story about this sergeant here and this other man, Private Moss. And that's the second story. Third story is titled The New York Tea Party. So that's the third story. Fourth story will be titled A Determined Young Survivor. So that's the fourth. And then the fifth is titled Out Ye Go. And then the sixth is going to be titled Not Settling for Safety. So those will be the six stories for next time so all right so put that aside there and gotta get uh, the phone here really quick let me grab it so all right so these are the hymns that we're going to do today we're going to do uh two today the first is hold the fort and then we're going to do storm the fort which uh is uh can go with the some the same instrumental as uh hold the fort and i'm not sure the original tune to it but uh, we're going to do it uh that way so let me uh Get this here. So hold the fort and look this up really quick. All right, so hold the fort. Here we go. Hold the fort. I am coming. All right, make sure that's the right one there. Got the book. All right, and then on this one, with the hold the fort, uh, when we get to this uh, last uh, uh, verse here, you wave the Bible, so you can participate if you want to. Uh, we do that in uh, the congregational singing part of the service when we sing this uh, hymn at Bible Baptist Church. So this is uh, hold the fort. Let me make sure that this is the right one here. All right, so, yep, looks like it is. So turn this down here. And let the ads get through. Oh, excuse me. All right. So turn that. All right. So this is Hold the Fort. And this is hymn 721 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is another one of these Spiritual Warfare of the Saint Hymns Spiritual Song. Written by Philip P. Bliss, who lived from 1838 to 1876. And there is a story here for this one. And so we'll do this one first, and we'll go back to the uh, the other one, which is titled Storm the Fort, which we did a couple days ago. Uh, we did this about, I think, three or four days ago. So we'll go back to that one and sing that one in, in this uh, instrumental um, tune here. So here we go. All right. See the signal waving in the sky Reinforcements now appearing Victory is nigh Hold the fort for I am coming Jesus signal still Wave the answer back to heaven By thy grace we will Alright, that one's a little too fast here Let's go, uh Sorry about that. Let's try to find a different one here. Let's go back to this one. I think this one was the one we did before. Let's, uh... All right. Yep, this was the one. Okay, let's turn that back up. All right, we're going to do this one 
here because this is more of our speed here. All right. Let's try it again. Oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the mighty host advancing, Satan leading on. Mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the glorious banner waving, hear the trumpet blow. In our leader's name will triumph over every foe. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. Fierce and long the battle rages, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander, cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. Amen. So we're going to put that back to the beginning. We're going to do this other hymn here in a few minutes. So let me read you the story here and then give you the references and then we'll move on to the uh, next hymn. And we're going to do it in this uh, instrumental tune. So here we go. This is a story here. It says, Ira Sankey tells of a painter named Tommy Dodd, the greatest drunkard and wife beater in Yorkville, Canada, Arriving to work one uh, day, Tommy heard two men singing, Hold the Fort, failing to realize their intent to suppress his putrid language. With song, he began to listen, asking them to sing it over and over again. <laughs> With a fondness of singing, he joined in heartily. As they concluded, he was invited to a young men's prayer meeting, where he surrendered to Christ, hallelujah. Now he was fond, uh, excuse me, now he was found at the church instead of the saloon singing the sweet songs of Zion. Well, praise the Lord. All right, so that's the story there uh, from Iris Sankey in his words. And now let me give you the references here. So stanza one, we have Romans thirteen eleven and 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Stanza 2 is Ephesians 6, 11, and 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. And then stanza 3, we have 1 John 5, 4. And then stanza 4, we have 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. And no reference for the um, uh, refrain here. So now let's go ahead and put this here into the book here and we'll go back to this other hymn here, Storm the Fort, and we're going to do it in the same tune as Hold the Fort, and this one is not written by the same uh, author, it's not written by uh, Philip P. Bliss, but it's written by uh, Horace H. Uh, Hawley, 
H-A-W-L-E-Y, and he lived from 1817 to 1917, and this is titled Storm the Fort, and this is another one of these spiritual warfare of the saint hymns, a spiritual song, and there is a little story at the bottom, which I'll read you again if you missed it the first time around. All right, so there's five uh, stanzas here, so might have to do